What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 185 of the Stand Up Guys podcast. I'm your host, the incomparable Zach Jones, joined as always by the Ninth Wonder, Chocolate Thunder, the Prince of Principles, the Earl of Ethics. He never steals, he never curses, he only fingers prison purses, the phenomenal A.J. Singh. Hey, what's up, folks? Prison purses? <laughs> Is that new? No, no, I've used that one before, but oh, it's, okay. a, it's a good one, so... <laughs> Uh, AJ, you, you watched anything good this week or done anything fun? Uh, I've gone back to watch X-Files for a third time from the beginning. Great show. Great show. Like, uh, the, obviously, like, uh, I don't know if we talked about this, but the, the special effects are, like, really bad. So yeah, I think bad. we talked about it a little bit last week. You were saying, like, uh. Yeah, I mean. So, I just, so even in season three, they didn't increase their effects budget to, to get some good effects yet? Well, I'm still at the end of season one or like, ha- there's so many episodes, like, you know, each episode is like supposedly like 45 minutes or so, 44 minutes or something like that. Pretty long. So like, you know, we, we watch it from like eight to 10. So we watch like two episodes a night sort of thing. And, um, I mean, yeah, I'm sure they do get better at some point, but God, we were working with so little in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> But the episodes are still fun. Like the whole. Okay, so here's what's funny about it. Scully, no matter how many times she's in like an X file situation, no matter how many times she's proven, like Mulder's right every episode. By the way, he's never wrong, and she's always wrong. And <laughs> no matter how many times she's skeptical, it always comes back as like Mulder knew, like he was right. She was disproven. Like, but she ends the episode with like, "We'll never know." We, we just, you know, we'll never know what actually happened or, you know, I just don't get it, you know, like sort of thing, right? And then the next episode, she always starts out with, Mulder, you're crazy. I can't believe you think this is, like, she literally sees a shape-shifting person, like all this kind of stuff. She, like, I don't get it. <laughs> She's really forcing that, like, disbelief at that point, you know? It's like in Ghostbusters 2 when, like, the whole world acts like the Ghostbusters are, like, uh, you know, crazy out of their minds when it's like, did you not see that big fight at the end of the first movie <laughs> where, where, where they blatantly like took down like ghosts? Like, did not a single camera work at that time? Or <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I've never seen X Files, but I'm like, I I knew that was a gimmick that like you know Mulder believed and and, and uh, Scully didn't or whatever, but yeah. Yeah, I always thought, like, in the back of my mind, like, if they had this many episodes, like, was she never convinced? <laughs> like, how I mean, does that... I'm, I'm, like, halfway through season one, and I'm like, okay, come on. Like, <laughs> it's just... <sighs> yeah, it's fun. Like, I get it. She has to be a skeptic, and you have to be, like, prove Scully wrong and, you know, figure out what's really going on here. But I mean, at the same time, it's like, geez, every time... Like, you know this goes <clears throat> into season two, three, like... She's still the same way. <laughs> oh, we did get a commenter on, on last uh, week's uh, video where we were talking about this that agreed with you that the X-Files uh, reboot was no bueno, was uh, mm. not not good. So Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's probably a consensus, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, have, you, have you forced your girlfriend to watch any more uh, terrible movies? No, but she actually took me to a like a a small theater recently where they play like old kung fu movies that are really bad. <laughs> we got a blast, dude. They had an Indian guy in blackface. Like they had they had a, he was an Asian guy, but playing an Indian guy, straight blackface. <laughs> oh my god. And he did this move where he would jump up like he'd go upside down and just move with one finger. Like he would just one finger on the ground, he was just like hopping on it and like he would go in a circle around you and stuff it was like what is this <laughs> but there was so much more like the main character like loses an arm and he gets miraculously found by a doctor who can train him at the same time uh, with his daughter so of course you know she's there to be the love interest or something and then um yeah it's just you know he he has this like whole like street fighter situation where he fights like all the, the so the bad guy he hires like a bunch of people from different places like Shaolin monks and all kinds of people to like be his goons or something like to, to fight for his cause 
and um, they escalate. Like, they get harder and harder as they go along, right? The the bad guys. Okay. And uh, there's one bad guy who's like who's like really he's like the main bad guy, and he's like you know he's like half cat, like he's like Rah! you know he's funny, <laughs> and like one punch of his will like kill you, like that's how strong he is, how powerful he is. Yeah, but uh, this guy was just like insane. He he's the one who like took that dude's arm off with like one blow. Um, yeah, so I mean that was the the big fight at the end. And this guy, of course, he trained his arm. He he put in that one arm he had. He put in fire. He he did all kinds of stuff to like you know become strong like in that one arm to make it like impen like in what do you call it? indestructible, and like um you know he has this all out brawl with the final bad guy and obviously he wins and stuff. But it was just such a cheesy, funny like oh my god, it was so. Well, well that's what I was wondering. So like the the good guy, like he like had to fight all these fights with just one arm then yeah at the yeah yeah he did he like halfway through the movie i'd say he loses his arm somewhere towards the beginning to middle and then he has to like you know train and you know come back to like get back to his good health and stuff and then then he had to go back on his journey to find the bad guys and deal with them so yeah i think uh, have you ever seen the uh kung pao enter the fist oh yeah yeah <laughs> there's that bit where like um he's trying to like strengthen up his hand or whatever mm. and, like his girlfriend like makes him like roll his hand in like glass and then like put it in salt <laughs> 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 all this crazy like, stuff that, maybe that was based on this scene because this dude like kept putting his hand in fire like over and <laughs> then he like just kept it in there like it was it turned black and everything it was just nuts <laughs> man i always thought like Kung Pao is such a funny movie that I always thought like more people should like do that where they 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 take these like old movies that probably nobody's going to watch anyway these like yeah. old silly kung fu movies or whatever just old movies and like insert themselves into it and make funny like skits out of it like that yeah I I think Kung Pao is one of those movies though that just flew under the radar like nobody watched it but it's like really? it's hilarious I I but I feel like it has a cult following or something. I think it might have a cult following, but that's the thing about cult. Fo you know, it's a small group of people that really like it, but you know, mass audiences just did not watch it. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. But um, I will say with Kung Pao, especially like the first five minutes of that movie, like before they get to the part where they're actually blending in the old footage, are pretty mm -hmm. rough. Like I could see somebody turning it on and be like, "What the hell is this?" and like turning it off before they even get to the good part. I get that. Uh, yeah. yeah, but man, I anybody watching this, if you've never seen Kung Pao Enter the Fist, you got to get past that, that those first five minutes. But it's it's fantastic. Does that woman ever say anything besides "meow meow meow"? Chosen one. <laughs> Oh, okay all right yeah she does say other stuff but it's always funny yeah <laughs> <laughs> one minute is so stupid where but it makes me laugh where she's like chosen one and it shows him like running like in the field like towards wherever he, she is and he's like i'm coming and she's like chosen one and he's like closer oh, yeah. and he's like i'm coming and she's like chosen oh, one and then he's further back again and it's like i'm coming <laughs> it's so stupid yeah <laughs> and they do like the, the whole thing where like the like the dog barks and then like seven seconds later you actually hear the bark <laughs> like the, that movie is just it's so funny like and that guy like um i don't know if he ever like made another movie like i don't think i remember seeing that guy in anything else besides uh kung pao I've never seen him again for anything, yeah. Man. Now I kind of want to watch that movie again. It's been a while. Yeah, I need to go uh, back and revisit it too, yeah. There's a lot of like... There's a lot of movies that I feel like kind of copied it. Like, uh, I wouldn't say completely, but you know... Like, I don't know. Would you say Velocipaster is kind of like that? Like, he has cheesy fights and stuff, you know? Like, you know... I think he fights like ninjas and stuff. Oh, I haven't seen Velocipaster. I I saw the thumbnail for it, but uh, mm. uh, it could. I I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a 
small group of like people like that were inspired by uh, Kung Pao to do like you know funny cheesy stuff like that. Yeah, I can imagine so. <laughs> Let's see. I watched a couple things, not a ton. Um, well, AJ, it was uh, uh, WrestleMania season, so I decided Ooh. to uh, I decided to get the old Peacock again for a month and watch WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. And I gotta say, uh, pretty pretty solid WrestleMania this year. It wasn't too much on there that I, I I rolled my eyes at. You know, these days with wrestling, it's like always kind of dodgy, but it was actually pretty good. Not a lot of like silly stuff that i didn't like so um that's great was, like oh, yeah. yeah so who are the big names these days like for wrestlemania who are the main like cards um so the main event was cody rhodes versus roman reigns so they're like the reigns. Yeah. yeah oh you don't know cody rhodes i don't he's the son of dusty rhodes oh. um and he was actually in the wwe for quite a long time but is kind of like a mid-card guy that never really like got over like super big mm-hmm. and then he left and he eventually went to that AEW company uh oh, yeah. that new wrestling company for a few years mm-hmm. and um uh then he came back and uh kind of got a push behind him and now yeah he's like probably he's the world champ now and like probably like you know the biggest name one of the biggest names in their company Oh, Actually, the WWE right now is like on fire as far as like attendance to and, and stuff. Like uh, they're doing very well, and like um, The Rock recently joined like their like board of directors, and The Rock's actually been on TV quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he was actually uh, on WrestleMania as well. He actually had a a, a, a tag match at, at WrestleMania. Um, although now I think he's going away for a while to do like a movie or something, but like he definitely bumped the ratings, like, you know, having the rock on like, you know, yeah, every week for sure. Yeah. But, I'm surprised um, the rock came back he must've got paid a fortune to come back. Well, now that he's on the board of directors, like, oh. yeah, he's, he's making like, I, I assume they're paying him like pretty big money, you know? Yeah. Consistently. If he's on the board of directors, he's getting paid like every whatever. You know? Yeah. And I'm sure he even gets bonuses when he's actually like on television and it makes sense you know, yeah. selling merch and things like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, WrestleMania this year pretty good. Man, um, wouldn't it be great if like you know? So does Stone Cold ever come back? Does Shawn Michaels ever come back? Um, Stone Cold actually had a match last WrestleMania. Oh, and I mean, it was kind of a gimmick match, like. You could kind of tell, like, he, like he's still in good shape, but you could tell he's not, he what, you know, he's not who he I used to be, yeah. you know, right? So it was a, it was a bit on the, rough around the edges, but it's like it's always good to see Stone Cold. And then uh, Shawn Michaels, I believe, is now uh, like WWE has their NXT um, show, which is basically like the, the up and comers that are being trained to wrestle. And so he's involved with that, like helping like training. Trainer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Helping uh, uh, train oh, that's pretty cool. new wrestlers. So he, he's retired from being ring. Real life. Did you say he was a jerk in real life or did you say he was like a pretty decent person? Who? Shawn Michaels? Yeah. Um, so definitely in the 90s, he had a reputation of being like a pilled up a hole. Oh, okay. Um, and. You know, he's one of those guys that became like a born again Christian. He's very religious now. Oh. I think some people say that he's like decent now, and and some people like I still think he kind of rubs them the wrong way. Maybe so. I can't mm. really say for sure. I I think he definitely had a time in the '90s where a lot of people hated him. Okay. Um, but I think I think these days like people have mellowed on him. But yeah, apparently he is like you know a big time like christian or whatever so you think being a heel in in wrestling and like being treated a certain way by a lot of people like just makes you like kind of like these people like i don't care anymore like do you think that has an impact i don't know because like i listened to jim Cornette's podcast and he he's mentioned a couple times that like back in the day 
like it seemed like most of the guys that were heels on television were like the sweethearts in real life. And most mm. of the guys that were baby faces were like the ales. <laughs> <laughs> so it was almost like an opposite uh, thing. What happened with The Rock, dude? Like he was a total heel when he started out, but people just started buying into it. Like there, it was so like Stone Cold was, he wasn't a heel. He was just kind of like, you know, did his own thing, you know, at his own whatever, like in his own style. But The Rock was always like, the rock says and like he was just he started out as a total heel before that even well you know actually you know what's funny with the rock if you look at his very first appearance as rocky maivia he mm -hmm. you know he wasn't the rock at that time he came in and he was this like big smile and they were kind of pushing okay. him in as, as this like really nice guy and like the people rejected him and they started like saying rocky sucks and die rocky yeah. die and all this stuff and that's what made him turn into the rock he was just like okay if they don't like me they're really not gonna like me and so he you know he went into it hard Damn, and uh, and you know and it worked man he got over that way uh yeah. it worked like charm you know even with stone cold it's funny because he started out as as a heel but then when like he started like you know basically you know kind of going against authority figures people were like hey i kind of like you know i like this like it, it was this fantasy thing like you know i wish i could stand up to like my boss or whatever yeah. authority you know figure in my life and he started becoming a baby face um and i think he's even said in interviews like you know he didn't like that at first because he liked being a, a heel and then like one of his buddies was like hey you know like you were kind of being a baby face out there. And he, like he didn't, he didn't like that at first, you know, but it was yeah. like, it, it became more and more obvious that like his friend was right, you know? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it was successful. He, he probably made a ton of money off of it. I hope he made a ton of money off of it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rock and Stone Cold. They were like the biggest things going during the Attitude Era, man. I, w I was a huge fan of them both. I do remember like, you know, people complaining that Vince wasn't paying a fair wage though like he wasn't taking care of the guys like maybe with health insurance and stuff like that i'm sure well, like, the has got better treatment but like some guys maybe didn't well what's messed up is is to this day um the wrestlers are not regular em employees they're considered subcontractors mm. even though they really don't because of their contracts they don't really have the freedom to go like wrestle like wherever and the, like basically because yeah it, it's one of those things and, and there's even like um john oliver actually did a segment on his show about this probably like last year or so it's kind of a controversial thing because really if you look at all the facts uh, of like what constitutes an employee and what constitutes a subcontractor really all these guys should be regular employees and uh, the WWE should be paying for their health insurance, which is not the case. Yeah. Now I believe like when guys are seriously injured, like the WWE will help like pay for their okay. surgeries and stuff. That's good. But I don't think the WWE pays for like, you know, base health insurance for them. I think they got to take care of that themselves because of the whole mm -hmm. subcontractor thing. But yeah, it is kind of BS. Uh, there's really no excuse, especially with a company as large as the WWE. They can 100% afford it. So, yeah. you know, they really all should be classified as employees. Uh, yeah. But I don't know if they'll ever uh, get get a politician in their corner that will actually, uh, you know, right. help them. Yeah. Um, so because I had Peacock, I decided to uh try a new show i saw on there which is a show, well it's a couple of years old but uh the show resident alien oh uh, what? Did I, no i didn't watch that okay yeah <laughs> yeah so stars uh uh you and i talked a little bit off camera about this the other day but it stars alan tudyk um mm -hmm. so he's this alien <clears throat> and he crash lands on earth and this is like a bit of a spoiler but they reveal it like very early on is mm -hmm. like the reason he was coming to Earth was to kill the human race. Like he was going to drop this bomb on him, but like okay. then his ship crashed. And like, um, so he, he's also like a part of this, like his um, race can shape shift. Mm -hmm. So he crash lands. He finds this guy in like kind of this remote cabin. Uh, they get in a fight. The other guy ends up dying. So he mm -hmm. takes over this guy's body. 
Mm-hmm. And so this guy took over uh, uh, his body was like a, a doctor. Mm-hmm. And so he kind of gets roped into being like the town doctor of this small town. Oh, that's fun. Right. Uh, and um, yeah, he just um, and, and uh, an added wrinkle is like there's this little boy in the town that for whatever reason um, can see his alien form. So like um, he knows he's an alien and like the, all the other like people don't. Is, um, he like, is he like always trying to tell people like, look, he's an alien or is he just kind of like cool with them or something? No, he tries to tell everybody that he's an alien. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just, it's a funny, charming show. Um, I think there's a good chance you would like it. I think um, so. I love Alan Tudyk. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say, like, sometimes he acts, like, so weird that I'm kind of yeah. like, I think these people would catch on that something's up. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? But, um, but no, it's funny. His character, like, he. <laughs> Just because, like, um, you know, he's trying to blend in, but he's he's kind of an a hole, you know, and okay. it, that leads to funny, like, you know, scenarios and things. Um, um, but yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun, and um, like the rest of the cast, like they're not like big name people, but like um, they're all like pretty good uh, actors as well, pretty good supporting cast. So yeah, it, it's 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 a pretty funny, charming show. I think I think it would probably be up your alley, actually. Yeah. Um. I did rewatch Eight Mile just because somebody else wanted to watch it, and oh my god, that movie is not. I don't like that movie. It's just it was so bland and blah. Like it just feels uneventful. It's just, it's it's just one of those things. Like, okay, so he he loses a a rap battle at the beginning of the movie, and then he wins at the very end. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's one of those I, I... movies. I've never seen that movie because I was like, man, I I don't feel like watching Eminem try to act, you know. Yeah. And I'm also like, you know, as, as someone who's not like a you know a rap fan or whatever, I'm like, am I gonna really enjoy this? It's probably not gonna be up my alley, so I just never watched it. But um, you know, it was popular at the time, I know. But uh, you're saying that you don't think it holds up especially well. I think it was just because of Eminem, like because he was so popular, like people just watched the movie because of him and they were like oh it's great because he's in it but um yeah it wasn't great i didn't think so you know i actually heard recently that eminem had like a phase where he was really depressed and he was popping pills all the time and he got to like 240 pounds right it's really big like he went he kept going to like fast food places and they were like that can't be eminem like eminem wouldn't look like that like but you know he yeah, that was him. I don't know. I don't know if this is true. Somebody told me this. I hope. I mean, I would think like I would think there would be like paparazzi photos of like fat Eminem, and it would be like I I would just think I would see like memes and stuff all over like so Twitter. Yeah. So I, I mean, you can't hide that, can you? I wouldn't think so. I, I'm, I'd you, be skeptical. He was, yeah. unless he was yeah. just like Get away from it. I think he would basically have to stay at home like all the time. <laughs> like order yeah. in i don't know yeah. but then I, I think i've seen videos of him like from not too long ago where he wasn't fat so i don't know i mean he he got out of that phase he he he's better now but yeah he's he, i've never seen him fat he's never even looked like he's you know out of shape so how old is that Plus, dude? he's got to be like 50 now i would yeah i would I would guess he's around 50, yeah. Jeez, when I was growing up, Eminem was like, you know, he was so young and youthful, like the same thing. But, I mean, you know, he just, he was such a, like, a rebellious young person, you know? Yeah. And now he's like a old man. <laughs> <laughs> a middle-aged man. <laughs> so he's, he's got to be careful with the waiter. They'll start, start calling him Fat Shady or, you know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> oh. yeah i just remember like how you know controversial he was when he first like started dude like also i i have i laugh so much at the fact that ice cube and ice t who were both like fuck the police i feel like there's got to be some sort of reason like they play cops and everything like i feel like hollywood <laughs> like all right, you said to the police, we got to, you know, we got to 
tamper that down. We got to figure out something here. So why don't you guys just become the police? <laughs> <laughs> become what you despise. Yeah. Let's let's mend this fence here. Let's get you on the you know on our side here. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird how that happens. Yeah. Yeah, because Ice T ended up on that uh, uh, Law and Order show. Yeah, Ice T made Cop Killer, like the right, song. right, right, right. And uh, you know, yeah, Cube was like the police. So, yeah. And then yeah, I think Ice Cube, at least in a couple movies, has played cops, hasn't he? I mean, Twenty One Jump Street. He's like a right. you know, big time. And then like, uh, what's what's that movie with um, mm, that little guy, uh, Kevin Hart? <clears throat> It's a bad way to describe oh. him. Yeah, Kevin Hart, he's also <laughs> So, I mean, like, at least those two franchises, he's been a cop. Maybe more, I don't know. Man, the thing I think of whenever I, like, think about, like, Ice-T and that cop killer stuff is just that that Charlton Heston video where he's like, die, 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 pigs, die. Catchy <laughs> little chew. I don't know that video. Hmm. <laughs> Dude, you gotta look it up. Charlton Heston reading the cop killer lyrics. It's it's funny. <laughs> because at that time he was like the the head like the spokesperson of the NRA. Mm. So like uh yeah, there's this video of him speaking at one of those events that he's like saying the cop killer lyrics. And it's it's I don't know, it's funny. Well what's crazy is like the NRA supported getting guns out of you know California. Like, you know, out of, like, gangs and stuff, like, they supported, like, laws to get the guns away from those kinds of people. So it's like, come on. Like, really? What are you saying <laughs> for them? <laughs> you know what's so weird is, like... You can have, you know, a bunch of guns around. I don't know how true this is, but, like, I heard that, like, you know, in the early days of the NRA, it was, like, somewhat of a respectable organization. But oh, then okay. in, like the mid seventies, I want to say like, it was just kind of taken over by lunatics. And like, ever since then it was, it just became like a propaganda campaign, you know? And uh, do you know how old the NRA is? Like, is it like really old? I ain't not, I'm not sure exactly. I, I want to say it was like, you know, somewhere in the middle of the last century, but I don't know exactly oh, when. Okay. That's not that old then. Yeah. Maybe it's a little bit older. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Oh, I also started watching uh, the final season of Star Trek Discovery. Mm -hmm. um, this season so far, at least, has almost kind of like um, a treasure hunting feel where like, like they're trying to put together this like map or this artifact thing and like there's a piece of it on all these different like planets that they have to go it's to. National treasure, except yeah, so, yeah, basically. Um, I don't know. Star Trek Discovery isn't like my my favorite of the like Star Trek things I've sampled. Uh, I know a lot of like traditional like Star Trek fans like really hate it because like, well, number one, it, it's more action based and less like smart social commentary. Mm -hmm. And then um, also, I think like there's a lot of things in it that kind of like uh, don't gel with things that happened in the original series. You know, like I don't know exactly. I, I'm not like yeah, in depth knowledge of Star Trek, but apparently, like they say, like there's things in it that don't make sense. So, uh, I'm sure it's true, but like I, I'm sure I'm sure the fans know. Like they're up on it. Like. The original series only had like a hundred episodes, right? More or less. You know, it, it it's only three seasons, but it was during that time when seasons were like huge. So, like, yeah. I think there is like over a hundred episodes, but for three seasons, that's you know, that's not bad at all. Yeah, that's a lot of episodes per season. You know, I think. I think I've watched like the first two episodes of the original series, and like. A part of me is like, I'm I'm somewhat interested to maybe check out more, but like, um, I'm more interested in like next generation and like the newer stuff. I guess it's just it's an easier watch, I think. But I don't know. 
I, I don't think there'll ever be enough time for me to, to watch all of Star Trek. There's too much of it. Gotcha. Um, oh, and then um, movie-wise, I decided the other night to watch uh, Renfield. Oh, right. That's Which what uh, the, What's his name? The the actor in that one? The young, He's like a young guy. Oh, um, uh, Holt? Nicholas Holt? Oh, yeah, Nicholas Holt. Yeah, yeah. Is it, yeah, he's yeah. going to be Lex Luthor in the Superman movie. Really? Is he going yeah. bald? That part I don't know. Hmm. I think they are, like, shooting it right now, but yeah. But you know what? Personally, I say, like, there's nothing that says Lex Luthor has to be bald. Like, I say let him keep his hair. Especially I don't young know. Lex Luthor. Like, if he's a young version of him, then, you know, yeah, you don't have to be bald for that anyway. Yeah. Heck, Lex, Lex Luthor was black in, like, one of the cartoons or something, like the animated shows. Yes, the Superman animated and Justice League. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he was he was black. Although he was voiced by a white guy, same <laughs> same guy that voices same guy that voices uh Mr. Krabs, Clancy Brown. Technically biracial then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> white voice, black body. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think they're if they're not shooting that, they're getting close to shooting it. So that's exciting, I guess. Yeah, that's the one with um, James Gunn heading it. Yeah. And that's the one with that corn sweat guy? Yeah. Okay, all right. I, I would have thought that would already be like a production. I'm surprised. I think it, might have. I think it is. I think it is right, right now. Because the other day I saw on Twitter, he posted a photo of him with um, um, both the corn sweat and the lady um, playing uh, Lois Lane. And they're like all like posing, like reading Superman comics. So like. And I think they were on set, so like I think they're filming it right now. I know it was like released, like who's gonna play like uh, Superman's mother and father recently? Right. Yeah, I saw those pictures, of it, but I didn't recognize either one of them. No, I don't know who they are. Um, is that the next project to come out for DC? Like, are they they're really slowing it down? Then, like, I know not a lot of things are coming out this year, but next year I would think maybe. I think there's a chance that that Creature Commandos cartoon might come out before. But as far as live action stuff, it's, um, yeah, it's that movie. What's Creature Commandos? Isn't that? Um, I mean, I'll be honest. It's, it's one of those pro- DC properties I'm not super familiar with. I've never read the comics. But, you know, basically it's these group of, like, kind of monsters, characters that... I think, like, in World War II, we're somehow, like, banded together in this secret, like, platoon or something to mm. to help fight Nazis or something. I don't know. Um, they, I know they announced, like, the voice cast at one point, but I don't really remember who all was uh, okay. involved. Um, but, uh, yeah, it might be fine. So, I know there's Teen Titans. Um, oh, yeah, we they- haven't talked... We haven't talked about that. They announced, yeah, that they're doing a Teen Titans movie. So it's, it's going to be like a live action, right? Or is it, yeah. I think it's live action, which I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. Um, Pretty good fl- franchise, though, from what I understand. I'm told it's loved. I mean, I kind of get why they're doing it, because there is a fan base there. But to, mm-hmm. for me, like, I don't want to watch necessarily a superhero thing that's geared towards teenagers mm. like some of those characters are, are okay like i like nightwing and thing but i would prefer they age him up a bit and just do like titans like you could say oh they used to be teenage sidekicks or whatever but now they're in their 20s or whatever you know okay um there was also the hbo show i think that was a uh... I forgot what it was called. It was it was also a DC show, wasn't it? Like, yeah. So they they did have a uh, a DC show called Titans. Okay, um, yeah. I, I actually I actually watched it. The first couple seasons are okay, and then it gets really bad towards the, end, the last couple seasons. So what's what's running for DC? I know all the CW shows are pretty much done. There's one one last season of Superman Lois, or Super. I, or yeah, yeah. Superman. And Lo- I I want to say that's it. Is one more season of Superman and Lois. And then I think those are all wrapped up. Like, I'm totally okay with not putting them on the CW, but 
I still think there should be C, like DC shows out there, like on better platforms with you know better writers and better you know, everything. Well, better, you money. know, as part of the the James Gunn relaunch, though, remember they are going to do certain TV shows. Like the, there is going to be a Green supposedly a Green Lantern live action series. Okay. And um, I remember I. Honestly, I hope they cancel this one, but remember they they announced that they were going to do like a Amazon's like like prequel that was like I don't know Wonder Woman's mom or something. Like I, I that's one I wasn't interested in. I was like, you can go ahead and cancel that one, but um, they did announce some live action TV shows, when and, they're, like... and they're also doing more. Um, um, uh, the Peacemaker show. Yeah. They're doing I, more I, of that. I can watch Peacemaker. I can definitely watch that. Um, when they do like shows about like, like the, the people who are related to a superhero, that kind of is a turnoff. Like what were they planning? They were planning something with maybe um, Monica Rambo and like, you know, I think there was something. Wasn't there something planned for her at some point, or am I thinking of Riri Williams? Um. Oh, on the Marvel side of things. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They're they're supposedly making a Iron Wars, I think, TV show starring Riri Williams. Although at one point, I, I remember there was like an internal thing where they were like thinking about doing a movie instead. So I don't know how that all shook out, but yeah, I believe they are uh, doing something like a Riri Williams based show. Or yeah, something. she's definitely not ready for her own movie yet. Like they gotta establish her somewhat, you know. Yeah, because we've only seen her in uh, Wakanda Forever, right? As like a, a small little supporting character, you know. Yeah. For the most part. So yeah, um, I think they're doing a TV show with her. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm still surprised you don't like Harley Quinn. Oh, the animated show? Yeah, the animated one. <sighs> I don't dislike it. I just, I never really got hooked. I think I watched, maybe someday I'll, I'll try it more. I, I, I watched the first season, and then mm. I want to say I watched maybe four or five episodes in, in season two, and then I just got busy with other stuff. And But yeah, it's not one of those shows that was like must watch for me. I don't know. I just kind of fell off of it. Maybe I'll give it a go eventually. Okay, all right. Yeah, like, I, I know. I, I know it has its fans. I know a lot of people love that show. I'm a fan. Like, wait, I don't know how much I've watched though. Did you? I think I got to the point where she was dating Kite Man, or somebody. Her friend, uh, Poison Ivy, was dating Kite Man. Yeah, yeah. I think I got that far at least. Yeah. Okay. So we're pretty much in the same place. But that means we're both behind because I think there's like four seasons of it or something. Three or four seasons great. of it. I love catching up. I, I still have to watch <laughs> The Boys. I got to watch this. I got to watch Invincible, the last season. Um, I do too. <clears throat> I did watch one more episode of Invincible, like that new batch of episodes. But I still have like three left then. Okay. Um, Reacher. I haven't watched that at all. Reacher's um, fun. Okay. There's a ton of shows I haven't seen. Oh, Fargo. Yep, Fargo's very good. There's probably more. <laughs> <laughs> of the ones you mentioned, like the boys and Fargo are probably like Okay. Start uh, would there. be up the top, yeah. That's what like on one hand it's like it's it's great that there's so many good shows, but then it's like you just fall behind like there, yeah. there's just so there's too much, you know. And plus, like, now that my schedule's a little busier, like, it's like, when am I going to have time to even, like, catch up? Like, I can watch, like, a 30-minute episode of something, you know, here and there. I can watch maybe two of those, you know, but they're fast. You know, it makes it feel like you're getting a lot in a little bit of time. Um, so I've been watching Ghosts still. It's still a fun show, man. Like, it's just silly, campy, like, but it's fun. You know, it's not poorly written, I don't think. You know, I appreciate the writing. It's not terrible. Um, it's just a fun show. I, I like it. It's bubbly, I think. That's kind of how I feel about that Resident Alien show, honestly. Okay. It's just mm -hmm. kind of like a light, like fun uh, show, you know? Yeah. Um, 
Oh, but yeah, that uh, so that Renfield movie, like, um, it, it's okay. Like, like it's not very long. Like, it seemed like it went by, and like it's now. It just it's one of those movies where it doesn't feel like like much happens. But basically, the premise is you know he's like Dracula's assistant, and Dracula is played by Nicolas Cage, mm. and he he's been his oh, assistant for choice. like that's a choice. Okay, <laughs> yeah, and he's been his assistant for like you know hundreds of years or whatever i don't know however old dragula is like getting him like you know people to victims basically you know or does one feel like vampire-esque too or something so he can live that long yeah so he's got like some some power but like um he's got this thing where like if he eats bugs like he it's almost like spinach for Popeye where he's like temporarily like really strong. Like, and honestly, like I don't know nothing about like, uh, Renfield. So like, I don't even know if that's established in other like lore or <laughs> no, whatever, but right. yeah. And, but basically he ends up, uh, mixed up in this whole, like, um, battle with this like new Orleans mob and like Aquafina what? play. <laughs> yeah. And like, <laughs> Aquafina plays like this uh police officer uh um that's you know they, they end up like kind of t- uh teaming up with each other and that I don't know it, it's like it's it's a light fast movie if you're just looking for an action flick that you know like an hour and a half or whatever but it's nothing you have to watch it, it's fine but it's it's nothing special to be honest yeah but it's got like some over the top, like you know, blood and gore in it. If you if you look like that, you know, I think in um, Dracula Dead and Loving It with Leslie Nielsen, Renfield did eat bugs. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I was a kid, I really liked Leslie Nielsen movies. I don't think oh, I ever I, watched that one though. I haven't. So it's been so long since seen a Leslie Nielsen movie, but I I do want to go back and revisit them, The Naked Gun, whatever, like. All that stuff. I want to see it, yeah. Speaking of the naked gun, it just lost one of its stars. The juice is loose. He's oh, he's yeah, gone. Right. He's loosening <laughs> the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to say heaven and then like, well, oh, maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Like um I did see one of his last tiktoks or something like where he's like you know i'm totally fine i'm just a little sick right now i'm gonna get over it i'll be back on the golf course and i'm like you know i don't know how i would handle being in that situation god forbid i ever am but like you know knock on wood but like uh i don't know like like chadwick boseman didn't tell anybody i guess there's a reason you don't tell people because like it's yours you want to handle it your way it's a personal thing you don't want others to like put their imprint on like your experience and stuff. Yeah. I mean, just being a civilian, like I might tell people, but if I was famous, like they were, I, I would maybe have second thoughts about it too. Yeah. Cause the narrative is not yours anymore. Like you're not in control of how you're going out. Like it feels like everybody's just kind of making the story for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think if I was famous, I would probably keep it to myself as well. You know, I might tell, like, some really close family members that I think keep a secret, you know. But mm-hmm. Did we talk about Patrick Swayze? Like, his was kind of, like, talked about. Like, it was in the tabloids in the press, like, when he was dying of a pancreatic cancer, I think. Yeah. And uh, he was smoking. Like, people were judging him. Like, you know, well, he wasn't dying of lung cancer. I don't know. Like, I'm sure smoking isn't good for any cancer, but. I mean, he's already got pancreatic, you know, cancer. Like, let the dude smoke. Yeah, at that point, he might have like already known. Like, um, I'm oh. I'm gonna die. So, like, what's what's you know what's the harm in smoking if you know if you know Johnny Depp like smoked a shit ton of cigarettes throughout his life. Like, I don't know how many, but he was a constant smoker, and he didn't like. Now he's getting old. You know, we see the difference now, but. I mean, I think he, he like, got to 50, 50, 55, looking good. Like, that's amazing. That's just, what do you call that? I don't know. 
I mean, and really, like, I don't know how old he is right now, but he's still not like you know awful looking or something. No, no, he just he doesn't have that you know youthful look that he had for such a long time. Right. You know, he just looks older now, but still, like, jeez. I heard that Joaquin Phoenix is a big like chain smoker. I don't get it, man. Like, you have so much to lose, especially as an actor. You know, in that position, like, first of all, you could lose. How common is cancer with smokers? Like, fairly, it's a high rate, you know, compared yeah. to others. And then, like, you could, you know, your looks and everything, if you smoke too much, they do change. Your teeth get stained. I'm sure there's, you know, ta- things they can do for that. But, I mean, your voice becomes deeper. For men, maybe it's a good thing. I don't know. But, I mean, geez. I mean, it's addictive. Okay. Man, you know what's crazy is like, um, I, I last month I was watching like a lot of like old like Perry Mason episodes, you know, like the old, like old black and white show, right? Mm-hmm. It was shot in like the fifties, and it's so crazy because everybody smoked. Oh yeah, <laughs> like every scene, the men in the scene, the women in the scene, they're all lighting up cigarettes, you know, pipes, cigars, like. Just they everybody's had no idea. yeah, they had no clue like what was happening inside their bodies. Well, there were even like advertisements back then that made it like, like almost like think people it was good for you. Like doctors recommend like this brand of cigarettes or whatever. You know, it yeah. was insane. And mm-hmm. like even the, there's like famously like a Flintstones ad where like the Flintstones are like <laughs> smoking like Winston c- cigarettes or something. And, yeah, like, I ever- heard about that. Yeah, they had like flavors for they still have like vape flavors nicotine vape flavors for like obviously kids <laughs> but like fun fruity flavors and colorful um yeah yeah i mean i don't know like the whole smoking thing like i remember growing up as a kid like going to like a denny's or something like even in my lifetime they had non-smoking and smoking sections yeah, same. Like, what is that doing? Like, is that really not smoking? Is still gonna get that? Like, <laughs> yeah, I remember that because, like, yeah, we would always sit in the non-smoking section, but like, yeah, you you were getting that smoke either way, really. Yeah. <laughs> who who is such a smoker that they like? Oh, okay, Perry Mason times. I get it. They were all doing. <laughs> but like, by the time I was like alive, people knew what smoking was doing to them. And still, at a restaurant, how are you even eating and drinking when you're smoking? Like, what is going on there? Like, how badly do you need to smoke? Oh, I'm in a restaurant. I'm I'm conversing with people. I'm drinking. I'm eating. And, oh, I just have to have a cigarette now. Like, what is that? <laughs> and plus, you're in an enclosed space. Like, it's worse. You just don't – it doesn't feel good to smoke in an enclosed space. Like, you want outside air at least. You know what makes me feel really old is like not only do I remember like the smoking non smoking section, I remember we had a restaurant that had one of those cigarette vending machines. Oh right, <laughs> I don't which, know if I've seen that. Maybe, which seems like such a like old school thing. Like I think people would even have like you know their kids would be like, "Hey, go get me a pack of cigarettes out of the machine or whatever." You know, it just seems like. Cr- crazy now you know yeah there was a time where parents would send their kids i don't know if they still do this but would send their kids like a few blocks down the street or whatever to like go get cigarettes for them they'd give them money to go get cigarettes that's crazy yeah before you had to be like you know show that you were 18 or whatever yeah wild times i actually i was actually in this sticks out to me because I was actually in that restaurant the day they actually removed that cigarette vending machine. I was like, man, it's an end of an era. Did people cheer or did people get really mad? I, I'm sure there was people, I don't know, people probably didn't care that much, but like, I don't know. It, just, it was like, it was weird. <laughs> end of an era. <laughs> it was, it was, it was weird. Yeah. Uh-oh. And, you know, I, like, I was actually the, happy when they finally, like, you know, everybody started, like, banning cigarettes from oh, yeah. indoors altogether. I was like, as someone who hates cigarettes smoke, I was like, yay, good job. 
especially like those people who have like what do you call that respiratory issues that's nuts that they had to deal with that yeah you have to feel sorry for like you know bartenders or just restaurant staff that are the same and hate that stuff but they're forced to be in it like all day it's just so yeah. disgusting you know yeah it's gross it's almost like they're smoking you know being around it so much I remember growing up as a kid, like, you would hear, like, cigarette smoking would stain walls in people's houses. They could turn them yellow. Yeah. Like, getting exposed to secondhand smoke could still be really dangerous. Like, parents who would smoke in their house were still really putting their children in danger, you know? You know, also, I remember as a kid just, like seeing ashtrays a lot more like we had them in our house and like people would come over and smoke and we give them an ashtray you know and i i feel so like you don't see ashtray yeah yeah cars jeez yeah i i still see a lot of people smoking in their cars probably yeah i mean is it is it cigarettes though, or is it something else? Because <laughs> a lot of well, people switched over to something else, <laughs> especially in Oregon. Right. I mean, I see people with cigarettes, but yeah, it's Oregon, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Um. Yeah. I mean, you're not allowed to hold a cell phone in your car, like even if you're like, no matter what, like I don't know. So, smoking and driving. I feel like that sh is that illegal. It's got to be illegal. Um, I actually don't think it's illegal as long as you're not, you know, throwing, throwing it out the window. Oh, okay. Interesting. So you can have something burning in your hand and that's not illegal, but a phone, yeah, but, you know, I get it, but to because the phone, the phone people are actually looking at it Yeah. with the cigarette. They're not, it's, True. I'm guessing the rationale. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like. I was thinking, first it was like cocaine and meth that came out, you know, and people didn't know the consequences. They'd give it to their kids as medicine and they thought it was good for you. Then that got banned and then cigarettes came along. And it seems like every once in a while a new thing comes out and there's not enough science to figure out, like, you know, how bad this is for you. So, I mean, we're starting to get on vapes. We're starting to figure out, like, how bad vaping is. I wonder what's going to come out in the future. I mean, it doesn't get you high, but I, I do wonder if in a few a uh, few years we're going to be like, oh, wow, Ozempic was really messing people up. Ozempic is a big deal right now. I don't know much about it, though. Like, it's like a weight loss drug, right? Well, the weird thing is, like, yeah, that's primarily it, is, is people use it to lose weight. Mm -hmm. But apparently, like, it has an effect on addiction, like, overall. Mm -hmm. And, like, I think people have claimed that, like – had them like stop smoking and things too because it like i don't know it, it does something to the brain that like quells like addiction really so like it's not just for weight loss that sounds good to me actually but i'm gonna wait for the side effects <laughs> to come out <laughs> yeah that's the thing is like it, it's kind of a weird thing because like i think a lot of people like you know even the drug manufacturers i don't think exactly know how it works or yeah. what long-term side effects might be. And there's a lot of these people just like going in on it and using it. And, and, and look, it might be fine, especially if it's making them lose a, lot, a large amount of weight, you know, but um, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's healthier, just it's always healthier to lose it with diet and exercise. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, if Ozempic came out back when I was like super fat, like, I don't know. I might have tried it. I don't know. I mean, you did it the right way, though, you know. Um, I do have some empathy, like sympathy for women trying to lose weight because it is way harder for them to do it. Way harder. Yeah, I don't know how much harder, but I, I, I do know that's a thing to where, like, I, th I think their metabolism goes down, like, even, like, uh, sooner than men's... Uh, does. And they carry fat differently than men do too. Like I don't know exactly, but it seems like they carry it like more on the outside. Like, so they have to like event. They have to work a lot to like show results. 
physically. Whereas a guy could work out for a much shorter time and he has that physical transformation that's very apparent, you know? So, and like weight loss is just, I don't know. I lost a bunch of weight so easily. And then like my sister, she's having a hard time. Well, she lost weight, but she's having a hard time losing those last like 10, 15 pounds. And like uh, every girl I've talked to is like, I'm 10, 15 pounds, you know, overweight and I just can't do it. Like they're trying. For me, it's like, I did plateau now, like a little bit. Like I've also been eating like, you know, more than before and like, you know, stuff like that. But I've been working out a lot anyway. So I am getting more toned, but I do want to lose more weight. So I got to work on that. I got to start eating healthier and less. Yeah, I'm in a similar boat. Like I've actually, I, I bought me some adjustable dumbbells. So I've, I've been doing some weightlifting, but like I, I haven't been eating well. <laughs> Yeah, so it's yeah. it's one of those things where I'm like, I know that if I really want results, like I do have to like, you know, eat a little better, but it had been exactly a week since I did my last workout. So today I just did like, you know, I wasn't home. So I just did like 100 push ups and like 230 like, what like leg lifts, I guess, like where you like, you kick your legs like this on the on your back. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So I did that. I haven't, been, I haven't done those, but I hear they are like good for you to do. Oh yeah, they're really good. Yeah. But yeah, I've uh, well for a while there, like I was doing push ups as well. I haven't been doing as many push ups now that I, I've got the the weights, but I'll, I'll usually do some crunches and and lift some weights, and then every other day I try to do you know thirty minutes of cardio on the elliptical. So. Yeah, push-ups are, like, great in a pinch, like, when you don't have access to weights. It's a really good, you know, like, because it works out your chest, your back, I think your your triceps. So, you know, you're getting a few muscles at the same time, and you're getting a lot of resistance, right, because you got gravity working with your body weight. So, I mean, it's it's good, but it's not probably as good as weights and stuff like that, you know. How many, like, um, push-ups can you do, like, just in one – set oh i hadn't done push-ups in forever till i did them today i um i kept doing 10 10 10 10 10 so in one go if i i think if after a week of doing push-ups i could probably do like 30 and then after two weeks i could probably get to like 50 maybe there was a time when i was young in high school i did like 77 one time for the physical test like so that was like when I did the most push-ups ever for myself. I haven't Maybe. done them for probably like a month now or so, but I, I was getting to where I could do like 55 of them. Okay, nice. Yeah. If I did any more of that, I'm sure my form would be terrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely learned the form in like boot camp and stuff. And I I think, honestly, what's weird is like I did so many push-ups in boot camp for hours and hours. But when it comes to actually doing them straight up and down repetitively, like quickly, I was still better in high school. Oh, man, I was just so out of shape in high school. Like, I don't know. I probably couldn't do very many in high school. High school was high school and the beginning of college were my physical peak. Like once I hit like 24, I just started like late vegging out, eating a bunch and like for a while, I just stayed like bigger, and then I got really big like later on, and uh, now I'm like trying to get back into my like youthful situation, youthful shape. No, you're in good shape now, man. I appreciate it, man. I'm trying to trying to get like you know, maybe a six pack, you know, like a nice chest, like a good you know, like good def- definition. And I think it's gonna take. I guess the easy way to get that is to lose more weight while you're working out, you know. Because, like, if you're kind of, like, a, a, if you're normal-sized even, like, it's just, it takes more work. Yeah, like, a part of me, like, because I do a lot of crunches, and, like, I can I can feel that, like, I do got some, like, abdominal yeah. muscle. Yeah. It's there, but I, I just, I don't know, I feel like I would have to lose so much weight for that to actually show is, like, abs that I'm like, right. man, I don't think I want, like, I think <laughs> I would just have to be miserable, like, you know, as far as my diet to actually get abs. Right, right. Mm. So if I can just get like looking like 
halfway decent, just like a little more tone, not so flabby. Like that would be good. I think we're a couple of normal guys. A couple of normal <laughs> dudes. <laughs> I think I'm like uh I think I'm getting close to what women would call like dad bod. Like no, not like no, you're not dad bod, dude. You gotta gain like, you know, 30, 30 to forty pounds to have a dad bod. Because you're you're what, six three? Oh no no. I'm like just a little over six foot maybe. Okay, okay. But um you're thin. Like you're you're probably close like thinner than average, I would say. So dad bods are like they got like a extended chest a little bit, like it it's meaty and they have like a a gut. You know, they're they're just kind of well rounded, you know? So <laughs> yeah. Jack Black is is a dad bot, I think. So <laughs> I don't know. Like the thing is, is like I still look terrible with the shirt off. Like I'm still a little flabby around the middle. I'm like I don't know. I don't look great, but um, I don't know. Maybe one day. Yeah. Like I definitely still would not go to a pool with my shirt off. Like I, right, right. I'm in that stage, you know. I'd like to get toned enough to where, like, I wouldn't feel uncomfortable doing that if I wanted to, you know? Yeah. Man, I mean, the summer's coming up, and I'm trying to spend as much time as possible outside. I, maybe I wouldn't wear, like, maybe I would wear a shirt in the pool. Like, I don't, yeah, I'm still not, like, where I want to be. So, I don't know, yeah. I would do it. That's the bad thing I found, though, about being fat for so many years is, like, <laughs> like even if you lose a lot of weight, you like, your body still doesn't look great just because you got, like, saggy skin and things like that, you know, from – so it's, like, I don't know. I hear that, yeah. I mean, you know, there, it sometimes does snap back, the skin. It can take years. Um, I think weight training is a good way to go because it does help like with the skin, like it does help with that situation. Yeah, so, I would think so. Like if you can actually build up your muscle, it, it should like tighten up Yeah, your skin, I would think. Yeah, that's the thinking behind it. Yeah. So there's ways to work on it. Lotions and stuff. Oils. Man, AJ, I had some uh, stories, but we've like bs for the whole time somehow i don't know how i'm going to cut this episode up exactly but uh <laughs> yeah i had some stories too <laughs> <laughs> but no that's fine it was a it was an easy episode it just kind of flowed sometimes that happens yeah, just shooting the shit well if you enjoyed us uh shooting the old crapola uh please go ahead and Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Leave us thumbs up, positive reviews, all that good stuff. Uh, if you're so inclined, you can uh, follow me over at, at Twitter slash X at Zach Jones Live. That's Z-A-C-H-J-O-N-E-S-L-I-V-E. -E. Uh, but that'll do it for all of our shenanigans and poppycock this week. Please, please, please tune in again next week. Bye, guys. Take care.